Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today I'm gonna go over uh, the economic cycle, give you an update on where we're at and what we're looking at. Uh, some people think that a recession's coming, I don't think that it necessarily is. Uh, I just wanna go over the economic cycle so you guys know kind of my opinion on where we are in the cycle. So I'm gonna go over the entire cycle in this clip so you guys kind of get a, a better understanding of how this works and where our investments necessarily should be during the economic cycle. So let's dive in here and I'll, I'll give you my opinion here. So this is the economic cycle. Uh, we've got a recovery phase in the beginning here. We have an early upswing phase, a late upswing phase, and uh, economy slows and enters recession and then a recession. So it's one, two, three, four, five in this uh, thing. You could also look at this as a recovery phase, an expansion phase, a hyper supply phase, and then a recession. Uh, that is also the real estate cycle. The economic cycle is the real estate cycle. And you can tell by how they put property prices in here as well. So when looking at the recovery phase, this is where we came from. Uh, stimulatory economic policies happen at the beginning of a recovery phase. Think of it as QE or, or money printing. Confidence picks up, inflation is falling. It's falling because of the real estate property prices uh, from the recession uh, coming over here. Uh, so inflation is very low. Short rates low or falling, bond yields are bottoming out. That's with the inflation. Stock market is rising, commodities start to firm up, and then property prices are bottoming. This is in the, the recovery phase, and this was back in 2010, the early 2010s. Um, the early 2010s is that recovery phase. And as it morphs into something else, it, this is what changes in an early upswing phase. It increases increasing confidence, healthy economic growth. Inflation still remains low. The short rates are neutral. Bonds are stable. The stock market is strong. Commodities start to pick up in strength. And then the property prices start picking up. Think of this as a mid 2010s so this is early 2010s this is mid 2010s like 2015 2016 2017 2018 then towards 2018 and onward we start a late upswing boom each of these cycles were about six years in length so six and six is 12 years i think this will probably be about six years and then this will be about five or six years uh, so six years from you know say 2020 2019 six years is you know, 2026, 2025, 2027, tough to say exactly, but it's somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, and this is where a lot of people will disagree. If there's any disagreement, it's on the length of these. Uh, I think that this is going to be a market that's going to take six, 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 six. Um, so it's six years, six here, six here, and six here. Uh, this is 12 years. Uh, 12 years is roughly you know, 2020 from the top of the last market. <clears throat> and then six years on top of that was 2026. That's kind of my guess. Uh, and then the late upswing phase, what that is, is the boom mentality. Inflation gradually picks up. Uh, policy becomes restrictive. That's exactly what's happening now. Short rates are rising. Bond yields rise. The stock market starts topping out. That's exactly where we're at. Commodities are rising strongly. That's exactly where we're at. And property prices are rising strongly. This is the late upswing phase that we are in. Uh, people like Mark on Twitter and some of these other guys that think that we're going to have a recession, they say, well, recessions always follow an increasing interest rate environment. I agree with that. Where I disagree is how long this phase is, is lasting. They think it's going to be very short. I completely disagree with that. <clears throat> We haven't built enough homes to get over to this side over here yet. We are still in property prices are rising strongly. I think that we have another three, four, five years out of this left. And I don't think it's measured in months. I think it's measured in years. And we'll be in the late upswing phase for a while. Uh, I think that we are still going to have higher rates. I think we are still going to have commodities pricing you know, rise strongly. Uh, there is a catch in all of this, and uh, let me like let me pull this up real quick. Uh, if we go to long-term trends, and you look at the M2 money supply, and this is the catch. 
um, that will throw people off. <clears throat> so this is the uh, M2 money supply, the, the black line here. Uh, this is what's going to throw people off, and it's going to throw a lot of people off here. This was a huge increase in money supply uh, in the M2 money supply. M2 money supply precedes inflation uh, by about two years, one and about one and a half, two years or so. And it's starting to come back down. And the inflation before, the inflation in M2 money supply, the black and red lines before were driven by the real estate cycle. This cycle was driven by monetary stimulus and the inflation uh, from the real estate cycle. It's got both of those combined. The stimulus will be pulled back. So we're going to get a surge in inflation. Then we're going to get a period of disinflation from the stimulus to what's natural in the housing market. So I think that there'll be a period where we'll have higher rates of inflation. What I mean by that, I don't mean that the inflation rate will continue to go higher. What I mean is they're going to be elevated. They're going to be at higher rates than normal is what I am trying to say. And that we will go into a disinflation period uh, for a little while, but the rates will remain high, if that makes sense. So they're going to be, they're going to go up to like say 8% and maybe they come back down to 6% or 5%, but the rates will be higher than normal but we'll have disinflation from 8% to 5% or 6% or whatever it is ends up being. And I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe they stay elevated for a while, but I think that, that the possibility is there based off of the M2 money supply coming back down. Uh, that's why I think that we will remain high, but we may come back down a little bit. That's one of the things that that's different there. Uh, so we're again, we're in the late upswing phase right now. That's where my opinion is. A lot of people think that we're just going to go right to economy slows, enters recession, where confidence suddenly drops, inflation continues to rise, inventory correction begins, uh, short rates peak, bond yields top out, the stock markets start falling, commodities start falling, and property prices tops out. Um, that's where I don't think we're, we're at yet. I think the property prices will still continue to rise for the next few years. I think commodities will, st will, will rise very strongly. Uh, for the next few years. Then we enter an economy that goes into recession, it slows, and then all you know property prices tops out. And then once those property prices start to fall, that is your recession. So uh, I think that those that are calling for a recession immediately uh, are just off in their timing. That's where I disagree. I don't disagree that they have the the that a recession following the late upswing phase is wrong. I agree with that. I just think the timing is off. And then the recession is confidence is weak, inflation peaks, production's falling, uh, short rates drop, bond yields drop, the stock market is bottoming, and then the commodities are weak and property prices are weak. I don't think this is here. We, our, our demographic is supporting a late upswing phase, and we have not even come into the economy. So the economy, this is worth things get a little bit confusing. Uh, you can see stocks and the economy can slow, but it's slowing from the late upswing phase. So the stock market starts topping out. That's where we're at. And I don't know. I mean, we, we could have the stock market still go up over the next year or two. It's possible that, that it hasn't necessarily reached its top of the top. Uh, so that one is debatable here where the stock market's topping. A lot of people think we're over here. I think we're over here. That is the difference between the majority of people. They think that we are transitioning from a late upswing phase into here. The reason I don't think so is because we don't have property prices peaking out yet. We are still at property prices are rising strongly and we still have commodities that are rising strongly. So I don't think that we are necessarily in this phase of the uh, economic cycle yet. Uh, yes, it's next. I just think we're some years out. That is the difference between uh, a lot of the people that you read on Twitter. They just go, uh, I don't know, they're like naturally on Twitter. A lot of the people are naturally uh, bears. They're, they're just like negative people. You don't make money when you're negative. You, you make money when you can accurately identify these cycles. And you usually get massive blow off tops in commodities uh, right before a peak. We haven't had that blow off top yet, in my opinion. I think that we are actually setting up for a massive move 
in commodities. And if you look at the commodity complex, uh, gold and silver haven't even started moving yet. And, and they usually move in a late upswing phase. Uh, also, we have not seen um, the expansionary phase of real estate happen yet. We haven't built enough homes. We are still short a bunch of homes. Uh, that's another thing that makes me think that we are, aren't at this top yet. Property prices aren't, they're not topping out yet. Inflation is still strong. And we can also see that a lot of commodities haven't had those big moves yet. Uh, we know we're, see, we're starting to see oil pick up. But the, the ratios in relationship to gold for a lot of the metals has not moved. So I still think that we are in the late upswing phase based off of all of the data that I look at. Uh, that is ratios, market conditions, inventories, all of these things. Uh, I think that we are going to see explosive moves in a couple of years from now looking at the market balances of a lot of these metals. Uh, that's aluminum, copper, all that stuff. They all go short in a couple of years. I don't see how commodities rising strongly that will happen in, in, in two years from now. It's going to impact your bond yields and short rates because you're going to see your CPI, I think, spike when it's driven from the supply side in a few years. So we could see high rates of inflation from stimulus, a disinflation from between now and a couple of years from now. And then I'll, I think we're going to see a huge big move in a lot of the commodities in 2024, 2025. So we might have a little disinflation in, in between that, uh, but I don't think we're going to see a deflation or anything like that. So that's where we are in the economic cycle. That's what I think is is heading. Uh, the markets are heading towards. That's where we are yeah, in the economic cycle there. And that's how I think it will play out. But again, I'm making predictions there. That's not the exact path that will probably play out, uh, but that's just kind of what I'm seeing in the markets. And hopefully that's what, what comes to, to fruition there. Uh, I think the late upswing phase will probably end in 2026, 2027, 2028, something like in that based off of the real estate cycle. That is the driver of this cycle behind me. Uh, if that's right, then uh, we've got huge moves ahead of us in commodities still. And that's also aligns very well. Uh, so that's liquidity driven. It also aligns very well with the supply side problems coming in the next uh, few years, like 2024, 2025. Uh, we're going to start to see shortages of or deficits in a lot of these commodities where prices are just going to start to go vertical. Uh, so that's what we've got uh, there. If you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscribe to the website, Platinum Membership, if you want to figure out ways to play this and the companies that I'm playing with it. And you can also see my portfolio and some of the companies that I own in, those, in, in my portfolio, my personal portfolio. Um, so that's all I've got. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.